after F3 on four. It's not quite the Costa del Sol, but here at Castle Coombe there are plenty of tans on show in the paddock because most of the drivers have managed to get away during the break since Silverstone. But this weekend is back to serious racing and for all but one of the drivers, there's a lot to catch up on. The exception, of course, is Alan van der Merwe because his whole season so far has been, well, let's face it, it's been a holiday. The South Africans' cruise around Britain's racetracks began at Donington with a brace of seconds behind early pace setter Jamie Green. That was followed up by a perfect double at Snetterton two weeks later, and victory number three came at Croft in round six. Finally, he took his fourth win to date at Silverstone last time out. In fact, Carlin's main man has only finished outside the top four on two occasions. Maybe we should rephrase it, a working holiday. No wonder he thinks a break is a good idea. It's good for, I think, the whole team as a group to sort of recuperate and um, they don't have that pressure of preparing the car, you know, if they have race weekends following each other up. From a driver's point of view, it gives you a bit of a chance to, um, to recuperate again from all the travelling and, and moving around. And then you can also um, start focusing on your fitness again. If that doesn't sound ominous enough, there's more bad news for the chasing pack. The championship leader has already won here at Coombe. Remember 2002? Last year was, uh, was the first time I won a race here and um, in F3. It's, uh, it's nice to come back here, it's, it's, it's a nice circuit, I think all the drivers enjoy it driving wise and um, yeah we've been pushing hard for this next race. So I think you know now is nice, I'm looking at it as, as a sort of a new season um, to get on with things again and, uh, and hopefully do, do what we've been doing all year really. Van der Merwe's lead now stands at 40 points from Britain's Jamie Green who's now got the other Silverstone winner Nelson Piquet breathing down his neck. Those of you with a good memory might remember that last year at Castle Coombe saw possibly the most obvious jump start in the history of motor racing made by Richard Antonucci. But they've been a lot less creeping this year thanks to these CCTV cameras that are watching the grid. At Silverstone, Robert Dahlgren's stop-go penalty for this jump start proved there really is nowhere to hide from the officials this year. And in terms of Formula 3 at least, it looks as though Big Brother is here to stay. Stuart Hicks at the BRDC set in motion a plan to give us these um, cameras and the recording facility so that every start of every race can be recorded onto tape and on that one tape we can see the start lights and all of the rows of the grid so there is a, a fair and proper system in place that the judges can use to judge the starts of all the races. I think it's worth every penny of it. If you're rolling that little bit it just means everything's already moving and you just come off the clutch and the thing will just go that little bit better so It'll just cut out any, any messing around, really. This year, you know, it's a level playing field. If no one cheats, you know, you're not supposed to move forward. You know, barring that everyone stays still, uh, it's fair for everyone. It's up to you to do a good start then. I think it's good in, in a way, but I think it's also it's very important that they keep uh, the same level of uh, judgment from the front to the back. Certainly we haven't had the reports coming into us about full starts. Now maybe the competitors are getting the message that it's there, so they've got to be a little bit more prudent than they might have been in the uh, in seasons gone by. Round 11 and it's all changed at the front end. Danny Watts has picked up his first ever pole position in F3, but he's closely followed by Carol Dahlgren and Van der Merwe. The question is, Steve, can he take the pressure? Well, only time will tell, and that time is about now. Danny Watts and Adam Carroll, effectively two rookies on the front row of the grid, ahead of the more experienced Robert Dahlgren and Alan van der Merwe on row two, with Richard Antonucci and Rob Austin completing row three. Will Power and Ronnie Bremer, Nelson Piquet Jr. and Jamie Green wind up the top ten with Pivio Piccioni and Ernesto Viso on row six. Viso, the top scholarship class car. And the engine revs are already rising. That long curved starting grid and a great start at the front of the field. Nice clean start by the entire field, I am sure. But look at the gap. Danny Watts has already opened up. And it's Carroll and Van der Merwe. And it's going to be three wide in the quarry corner. That's awesome stuff. Yeah, Watt's got a great start there, but it's Alan van der Merwe who's made up two places already, round the outside of uh, Adam Carroll there, so a uh, good start there for him. Well, a good start for him, but problems for Rob Austin, a damaged front wing on his car, and that is Will Davison spinning off. Terrible race for him. Oh, and Richard Antonucci, what are you thinking of? Straight on at the S's. He's going to rejoin down in ninth, tenth. It could even be as low as 11th place. So Antonucci really losing ground on the opening lap. And this is Karen Chandok. He's going combine harvesting. 
Yeah, big moment there for Chandog. I hope he's going to get back out of there, but I'm sure he's pretty lost there right now. Well, at the head of the order, it is Danny Watts. And then behind him comes Alan van der Merwe and Adam Carroll. And that accident for Karen Chandok really is going to hurt his championship points in the scholarship pass because Ernesto Viso, he is in 11th place. There's the green and white car on the right of our screens. He is absolutely flying. And a great midfield battle going on here. Rob Austin is starting to hold the traffic up behind him. And Will Power and Clivio Piccioni are turning into a very disorderly queue. Rob Austin is really going to suffer in this race. He's lost the front wing or half the front wing on the first lap. 50% of his downforce and this track is renowned that you need as much downforce as possible with these high-speed corners, so he's going to have a big battle on his hand. Well, they're looking at the jump start monitor, but I am pretty sure that will be a clean bill of health because all those cars look pretty good there. Let's have another look at it. You look at Adam Carey, he gets away from the line the quickest, but then he fluffs a little bit maybe on the gear change to second, but Danny Watts gets the drive. A really good start there for Danny. Well, at the moment, Danny Watts is running away at the head of this race with Alan van der Merwe and Adam Carroll. But look at the battle still going on behind. Rob Austin really is making it as difficult as possible for Will Power. He's going to need more than Will Power to find a way past this man because just watch again. Rob Austin here slows the car behind down and he's controlling everyone else's speed through the corner. The question is, can he hang on? It's going to be really hard for Austin because they're already swarming all over him. But Austin is renowned again for being a very good defensive driver. Maybe a little bit too defensive at times, but he should be able to keep him behind for a little while. Well, heading through Tower Corner on the backside of the track here. 70 miles an hour up to 100 and then breaking hard down into that 50 miles an hour. The right and the left through Bobby's. And this is now where the car's really going to use that downforce because it's the flat out 115 mile an hour camp corner on the start finish line. Oh, and that is brave racing. And a very nice move by Will Power. The dirt flies behind across the start finish line. Oh, that was very well held. Absolutely on the edge racing. Great move there by Will Power. He kept it together, got down the inside, but in that corner, that's a brave move. But do you see Stephen came behind on the grass? All four wheels, out of control, but he kept it together. Well, that is what it's all about at Camp Corner, one of the most demanding corners of any racing circuit in Britain. Let's take a look at this move again. A perfect move there by Will Power. He gets the drive out of Bobby's on the inside. It's very close. Rob Austin only gives him a minutest amount of room, but Will Power's got the line on the exit. Well, Rob Austin still holding on to that seventh place, but only just Livio Piccioni is the next man in the queue. And effectively now it's seventh down to 16th place, all in one melee. And that green and white car, don't forget, that's the scholarship pass car of Ernesto Viso. And he really doesn't need to be battling with the championship pass cars ahead of him. He's after his own set of championship points. Meanwhile, bundling his way alongside Piccioni, he's up into that seventh place. And Jamie Green in the number four car tries to get by, but on the run up to the S's, it's back ahead again for Rob Austin. That is a great piece of defensive driving. Yeah, it really did look like Jamie Green had got the move on him on the exit of that corner. Rob Austin defending really well. You look, Piccioni's on the inside. He pushes Rob really wide. Jamie's up underneath and ahead at this stage. So how Rob got the traction, got the ability to get in front, I don't know, but he's kept that place. And behind him now comes Eric Salignon, the returnee from the French Formula 3 Championship. He's missed a few races this season, but he's certainly not ring rusty. But oh, again, huge locked up moment for Rob Austin this time, and through goes Jamie Green. He's down to ninth place now for Austin. And Salignon and the rest of the pack, Nelson Piquet Jr. working very hard to work his way through from a lowly ninth place qualifying. He's slipped back a bit further. He's made a poor start. He's on a fight back as well. And again, that green and white car, and there's still so trying to go away around the outside there of Scott Speed. It really is mixed and matched out of the back. But that is the race leader. And the race leader, I do not believe it. Danny Watts has thrown it all away. Through comes Ronnie Bremer, and he stalled the car in the middle of the track. Just how much more wrong can it get? After such a big spin, I can believe he stalled the car, but to spin off in the lead, what a big mistake there for Danny Watts. So far, he's lost three, four, five places. There's Jamie Green, he's down another place. He's got the car going. Let's hope he doesn't lose too much more time. Well, the rest of that train's going to come by as well, so that's down to 12.30, 14th place now, and that is from the race lead. Let's take another look at that one. Right in the middle of the corner, it hits the bumps, the back end of the car just gets on the dirty line on the exit, hits the, there's a little bit of curbing, and he just runs wide on that. Here we are in car, facing backwards, the back's already gone onto the grass, and he's a passenger from there, but that's a high-speed spin. 
very high speed spin, over 120 miles now. There's another replay. Thank heaven it went to the inside of the track rather than the outside because that's where the pit wall is. And Danny Watts' loss is Alan van der Merwe's gain, but just look at the man behind him, Adam Carroll. And Alan van der Merwe, don't forget, won his first ever British Formula 3 championship race a year ago exactly here at Castle Coombe. Is he going to make it a double? Well, not if Adam Carroll can do anything with it. And don't forget, Adam Carroll is racing on a really tight budget. The rumour is he may not even be racing after this meeting because he's running out of money. Let's just... Oh, and that's Danny Watts! And Watts has clashed with another car as he was trying to make his way back up the order. And the race is most definitely over down at Quarry Corner. The other car there is Tor Graves. He's had another bad race, but looking back, a bit of smoke there, tyre smoke on the left-hand side. Flash of the nose of Torg's car there. So he's lost it under braking and taken Danny out. Big shame for both of them. Well, two very disappointed drivers. The safety car is out on track. And that means that Alan van der Merwe will be having to do a rolling restart with Adam Carroll right on his rear wing. And that is Richard Antonucci. Now, we saw him overshoot the S's on the opening lap of the race. And I wonder if he's had brake problems because the car has not been making its way through the field and he's obviously decided to call it a day. And so, sadly, has the initial race leader, Danny Watts. This is one he'd like to forget. Heading back to the restart then. The safety car already pulled off into the pit lane. Alan van der Merwe, Adam Carroll, we're riding in third place with Robert Dahlgren and he has the Dane Ronnie Bremer right behind him. One, two, three, four, they're making a run at the head of the field. It's not long to go and Adam really has got to put the pressure on uh, Alan van der Merwe for these last couple of laps. Bit of smoke coming out of the back of Alan's car, hopefully you get to the end. And this is going to be playing into Adam's hand, he'll be seeing that smoke and thinking, oh, I've got a chance here, maybe that car's going to break. Well, heading up to the S's. And, uh, well, no sign of that smoke there. Don't forget, it's a very bumpy braking area down into Quarry Corner. I was just wondering there whether it was more tyre smoke than anything else. Meanwhile, the battle still goes on. This is the battle for 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and ninth places. Will Power in 5th, then Clivia Piccioni in the black number 9 car, followed by Jamie Green. He is in 7th place, and the yellow car behind him is Eric Salignon. Behind them all is Nelson Piquet Jr. Don't forget, runner-up in the championship at the moment, and he is down there in ninth. That won't help his points tally. Meanwhile, a challenge again from Adam Carroll. This is where he thinks he has the advantage, through Quarry Corner. But again, Alan van der Merwe has the racing line. You can see him taking that defensive line there, and this is the last lap of the race. Last time through the S's, heading up to Old Paddock Bend. And Alan van der Merwe, to me, looks like he's got it under control. Yeah, he certainly does, but you see the red light on the back of the car keeps coming on. I don't know if that's a problem with Warren or Alan playing games with Adam there. Well, it may just be a little distraction. Meanwhile, good run in number six for Robert Dahlgren of Sweden. The Scandinavian battle is going in favour of him, of, of Ronnie Bremer of Denmark. But it's Alan van der Merwe, the South African driver, is heading for a double. Adam Carroll can't make it now. Surely flames from the exhaust of van der Merwe's car as he takes the chequered flag. And a very, very delighted Alan van der Merwe wins where he started his winning streak here at Castle Coombe. Confirmation of the result with Alan van der Merwe from Adam Carroll by just a quarter of a second, with Dahlgren, Bremer and Power completing the top five, but a disappointing race for Nelson Piquet Jr. as Alan van der Merwe extends his championship lead. Adam, well done. You've Thank spent you. a month practising your starts then. Yeah, uh, not really, but it just seemed to pay off really well, I think. Um, I got the perfect amount of wheel spin and uh, we have a very long first gear and that just carried me all the way up. Adam squeezed me a bit but he gave me just enough room. Just from then on I thought, I can't really keep up with Danny so hopefully if I'm close enough he'll, uh, he'll push a bit too hard and he did. It's been unfortunate but I guess uh, you've got to be there in the end to win it. So Alan van der Merwe pulls another win out of the bag in round 11. Join us in a few minutes for round 12. My truck is broken down. May I use your phone? Certainly. Come in. Right before the sign, you turn right on a small road. You'll find me. OK. See you. Yeah, bye. Would you like to use a bathroom? Oh, thank you. It's just through here. Farewell. Brewed slightly stronger for a smoother taste. Carlsberg Export. So good, 
the Danes hate to see it leave. They thought they were above the law. Oh, hell of a job, isn't it? But one cop is about to bring them down. It's gonna get ugly before it gets better. Kurt Russell, V. Reigns, Dark Blue. 192 is being replaced with lots of new directory inquiries numbers. All beginning with 118. Ah, but do they all end with 118? No 118. Only we do. So you just dial 118? Twice 118. Hello. 118. 118. Not your number. I never lie about my age. My anti-aging cream does that for me. The number one anti-aging cream specifically designed to work against seven signs of aging is Olay's Total Effects. Hey, I won't tell if you won't. Total Effects from Olay. Love the skin you're in. And to specifically target those lines that give your age away, try Olay's Intensive Restoration Treatment. Listen closely. You're the best the Confederation has ever put together. Your objective, total obliteration. Brute Force. Okay. Yeah, of course I love you. Of course I do. Yeah. I'm a bit busy right now. Can I? Uh... Yeah. Sage and Myx Six, the latest technology now available to all. Get inside. Channel4.com. Welcome back to Castle Coombe. I'm at High Tech Racing where they're desperately trying to rebuild Danny Watts' car after his crash in round 11. David, how can we? Can you do it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, it's uh, done a bit of damage, but yeah, we'll be there. What's the prognosis? I mean, what, what's been done to the car? Um, just a rear corner, a bit of gearbox, but nothing major. I'm sure we'll, we'll sort it. Well, good luck. Well, thanks a lot. Hope to see you on the grid. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll win the next one man who benefited from Watts' mistake and took second place was the cash-strapped Adam Carroll. That's got to be good for the Keep Adam Carroll Racing Fund, hasn't it? Well, hopefully. Um, obviously, we would have liked to have gone one better, but unfortunately, I just didn't make the best start. The grip on the track just caught me out and I bogged down and just didn't get off the line very well. So that basically cost me you know, my second place up into the, into the first corner, and that was the race, really. So a little bit annoyed with myself. Did you see what happened to Danny then? Um, not really, I just saw a yellow thing disappearing off into the, into the field, so uh, I just think he, I think it was the slippy on the way in, I think that maybe upset him a bit, and then he just looked like he run wide and got his wheel up on the outside of the circuit and it, it just spun him off onto the inside, so, you know, well you know that's one, one less person in the way, so I knew it was in second then and just tried to push Alan as hard as I could. Here we go, round 12, and Danny Watts has got another chance to take his debut win thanks to the hard work of his mechanics. Next to him is Robert Dahlgren. Let's just see if Danny can keep it on the island this time. Oh, the pressure will most definitely be on Danny Watts. Once again on pole position, this time with Robert Dahlgren of Sweden alongside him. Then it's Adam Carroll and Rob Austin on row two of the grid with the opening round winner, Alan van der Merwe, and row three alongside the Dane, Ronnie Bremer. Livio Piccioni and Richard Antonucci line up on row four ahead of Nelson Piquet Jr. and Will Power with Ernesto Viso 13th on the grid, the top scholarship car. And another clean start at the head of the order. Yellow flags waving further down the field. There's somebody stalled on the line, can't see them at the moment. All eyes are on this wheel bagging battle at the head of the field. And Danny Watson, Robert Dahlgren, neither of them is giving an inch. And Avon Rise into Quarry Corner. This is where it will really tighten up. Dahlgren got a great start there. He's alongside Danny on the way up. And they've been a wheel banging, but Danny got a good drive through that first corner. He's got a clear line into the next corner. Well, up into the S's then, Danny Watts extending an advantage, just look at the pack behind them, oh no, Richard Antonucci, well they say lightning doesn't strike twice, uh, it just has for Richard, again straight on at the S's, he's got to get that right sometime, but one and two at the head of the order, Danny Watts and Robert Dahlgren, let's take another look though at Richard Antonucci, what went wrong? 
He either got it wrong under braking or there's someone on the inside and he could turn into the corner. But that's the second time he's done it, but at least this time he didn't lose as many places as the first race. Well, Antonucci will be furious with himself. This man, Danny, wants to be trying. Oh, and he does put another wheel off on the outside of Camp Corner. That's the start-finish line. And, well, he does not want lightning to strike twice there. Meanwhile, Robert Dahlgren, a little bit of a distance behind, but watch him close in now as they come over Avon Rise, down into Quarry Corner. And that is what Quarry Corner is all about, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. And that is number 11, Rob Austin, again battling with Clivio Piccioni. Hopefully he's not going to lose a place to Nelson Piquet Jr. who's right behind. First through will be Piccioni, he's there, and Rob Austin, he's kept that place from Piquet. Well, Piquet no doubt will be trying just as hard. Rob Austin at least has both front wings on his car this time, but he is again slipping back down the order. Don't forget, he started this race in fourth place. He had a slow start, and he's going backwards. That car obviously does not suit the characteristics of Castle Coon. It must have been all right for qualifying, because both the menu cars were right up there. His teammate Adam Carroll was third and Rob did a good qualifying session, he was fourth, but maybe he's just lost a bit of momentum at the start of this race and uh, needs to get his confidence back up. Well, no need to get the confidence back up for Danny Watts. The question for him is, can he hold on and not make any more mistakes? He is absolutely furious with himself after losing the first race. Meanwhile now, the man under pressure is Robert Dahlgren. And the Swede, the former Formula 4 champion, has Adam Carroll once again breathing all over his gearbox and Carroll really does need to impress. He needs to find sponsors to stay in the championship. For me, it would be a tragedy if he doesn't do it. It's always a sad time this part of the season, you know, halfway through, running out of money for these guys. And it can go two ways. I mean, he can be trying so hard that he makes mistakes, but he's doing a really good job right now. Well, Adam Carroll certainly in the car, one of the coolest customers you're going to find. Meanwhile, Rob Austin still holding on ahead of Nelson Piquet Jr. And don't forget, Nelson Piquet Jr. Oh, puts a wheel on the dirt there. Very nearly loses it. Piquet Jr. needs to get up the order to get championship points. And that is one of our Malaysian drivers. That is Faris Fauzi, Team SYR, of course. Three Malaysian drivers in this race. And, uh, well, just simply loses it. Bangs it over the curbs at Bobby's, but keeps it out of the way. The problem is now he's stalled the engine and the rest of the field is steaming round on him. You know, I wouldn't want to be sitting in that car. Now you can see the marshals are there, but they had to run away. I don't know if he's still in the car. He's yeah, still in there. Hand up. <laughs> Please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Well, the yellow flags, of course, do mean slow down and be prepared to stop. You don't need to stop there, but anybody that were to slide in that car would be very much in the wrong place at the wrong speed at the wrong time. It's Nelson Piquet Jr. still closing in on the back of Rob Austin and is very, very keen indeed to try and catch up on that seventh place car. And Nelson Piquet Jr. this time driving through clouds of dust. It's getting frantic at the front. This is the battle for second and third places. Robert Dahlgren and Adam Carroll is dogging him every inch of the way. Can't quite find a way past this time. Carroll will be looking for weaknesses in Dahlgren's driving style right now, seeing where he's better on the brakes or not so good on the brakes. And he's just showing the nose every now and again to try and put him off and maybe make that mistake that will let him through. All the time they're doing that, Danny Watts is out on his own. He's got a two and a half second margin, and that is another rotating Malaysian. I do not believe it. That's Rizal Ramley, and it looks like he'll be able to get his car going again. Meanwhile, absolutely on the limit, through Camp Corner, up through Folly, climbing Avon Rise, first, second, and third places. Danny Watts, Robert Dahlgren, and Adam Carroll. The question is, will that order stay the same? Danny's got a good lead now. He should be just backing off and thinking, keep this pace. These guys aren't anywhere near me. I can just keep this pace to the end of the race, and it's going to be mine. And look, that car is really close. Maybe we're going to see a safety car at the moment. Well, yellow flags are being waved. Everybody has dropped their pace. They should be able to find a gap to recover that car, so maybe we can get away without a safety car period. If there is a safety car, that will close the gap right back up again, as we see again. The poor Rizal Ramli, number 18 car there, just spins to a standstill. The good news is now he is up and running and away. Meanwhile, car 51, Ernesto Viso, a calmer race for him this time round. And that is good in terms of championship points. Closing him up on the scholarship class championship leader, Stephen Kane. But Kane is still out on track and still second in the scholarship championship. Yeah, the whole race seems calmer this time, but that's all to do with Rob Austin losing that front wing in the last race and bunching everyone up. There isn't such a problem this time. And Nelson Piga, he's off at Camp Corner. What a big spin, he kept it off the wall. Oh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> oh, spoke too soon then. <laughs> Well, Nelson Piquet spins it away down at Camp Corner, and his car is right on the racing line at the fastest corner on the track. Let's take another look. He's lost it the same way as Danny the Watts has, but this time the car spun to the outside of the circuit and not the inside. And, oh, that is a big moment. Well, riding with Richard Antonucci, there you can see just what a big moment it was for Piquet. 
and the red flags are indeed being waved. The car trapped on the racing line and they've decided to bring the race to a premature end and that means victory for Danny Watts, his first Formula 3 win ahead of Robert Dahlgren and Adam Carroll and no doubt a very welcome victory. And in 10th place, Ernesto Viso takes the scholarship class. Mandy's Dan. Anne. Well done, Anne. Danny, your first win. But why couldn't you do it this morning? Oh, made the biggest mistake of my life, I think. I dropped a wheel off and lost my big gap that I got, but I always take the positives out of that. And, uh, you know, it's easy to get down about it, but I didn't just stay focused and got on with my job, really, which was to put it right in the second race, which we did, so it was great. I mean, I'd just like to thank the team, really, because they've I've kept them busy over the last 24 hours, to be honest. This is, this is for them. They've done a great job. Well, they have indeed. But the man who's done the job in the championship is Alan van der Merwe. Now with a 64-point lead over his teammate Jamie Green, Nelson Piquet Jr. dropping to third. Meanwhile, Adam Carroll, well, he started late. Three out of four podiums, but will he be around for the next race? Adam, well done. Are we going to see you at Alton Park? Well, right now, no. Um, I'm going to have to try hard the next uh, couple of weeks to try and get some, some sponsorship together. So uh, we'll have to just uh, wait and see. And then, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be at Alton. So we need to have a little 0800 number or something here. Dial in yeah. and sponsor him. Yeah, dial in and sponsor me, please. It'll be worth your while. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Ernesto Viso, the champagne is flowing. A double at Castle Coombe, and that does his championship standings a power of good. He's now three points ahead of Karen Chandok and 39 points behind championship leader Stephen Kane. Second time lucky then for Danny Watts, who takes his debut win for high-tech racing. Next up for the lads is Alton Park. See you then.